wave your hands. If you are a maker, wave your hands. Let's worship him. Listen to me carefully, everybody. The problem, I think the Bible says in the book of Hebrew 4, verse 2, it says, The gospel was preached to us. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not mixed with faith in them that had it. The gospel cannot be profitable to a man who does not mix what you hear with faith. And any time it is meet with faith, action follows. When you see a man not acting on the word, it's because it was not mixed with faith. Which means the gospel can be preached. You can sit down here and hear the gospel for one year and not profit from it because it's not mixed with faith. And why it's not mixed with faith? When you begin to use your human understanding to calculate the wisdom of God. Human understanding. To calculate the wisdom of God, then you miss out of faith. Faith simply means your total what? Belief and response to the word of God. If God say it, just believe it. Because he who say it is faithful and he will do it. But when you want to use your head to know, calculate, then you run out of faith. So please, don't allow this year, the gospel of this year, to be in vain in your life. Make sure that as you come, you are open to hear what God is saying to you at every given time. Is that clear? And number two, you have to believe that word is the word of God and go home to apply it. You see the mystery of the gospel at work in your life. So I hear. We've been talking about divine help this month. We've seen that God can help men, help anybody. But we are trying to say that whatever God has done or we do, that's the part that men will play. Is that clear? And I've told you before that Christianity is a collaboration between divinity and humanity. When God is in the name of Jesus, I talked about also obedient. You want to find divine help, you must be willing to follow divine instruction and obey the word of God. And we talk about uh, a little bit also, I think, uh, uh, about you making him your helper. Many people, you are in need. You need help. But yet, you have your own ways. Make God a helper. Make him your only hope. Let him know that you don't have any help from anywhere. And we talk about what? Testimonies. That in time, you, when you need help, remember when, how he has helped you before. Is that clear? And beckon on it like uh, David did. And remember what he has done before. He can do it again. And always be willing to share what, how he has helped you so they can help you the more. We talk about sacrifice. We saw how Abraham, how Gideon, and others, through their sacrifice, obtained divine help. Uh, are we still together? Yeah. And we also, I think there are other few other ones uh, we're going to talk today. Maybe three will be able to close. See, it is not about month of divine help that brings the help. God has spoken through his uh, mouthpiece. Is month of my, I'm going to get them divine help. That divine help can start from today and continue until you die. As long as you apply the principles. Is that clear? It can start today and will not end this month. It can continue each day of your life because you have come to realize, to understand how to activate the divine helps. That is why it is very important. Now, you go home. You go home. Sit down with the messages. Itemize the principles unleashed here this month, maybe 15, 17, and 20, and begin to see how you apply them or apply yourself to them to obtain divine help. And if it's from the word of God, 
and God has promised to help you, you apply the keys, the help will be found. Is that clear? It's not just coming to church and sit down. At the end of the day, you throw your book, you throw your paper, you throw everything. You continue the same way and you are praying for help. No, no. The wise man says that doing the same thing, putting the same, the, a different result, is a height of what? Insanity. Sit down. I've taught you this year. Joshua 1 verse 8, 8, 8, 8. Sit down with this thing. Create one hour with God each day. To study the word. Go back to your notebooks. Divine help. Follow instruction. Do I follow instruction? Which instruction am I not following? That would deny my divine help. You look it, explain yourself with that scripture and find the area. You work on it. Now, uh, hand over your problem to God. How am I dragging it with God? Oh, I've been trying to do it my own way. God have your way. Is anybody in the house? Then, this and this and this. You look, and that's why you come to church. You look, you use that word of God you've had as a mirror to check yourself, cross yourself, by the time you put it right, you will never miss that help. You can't be coming to church just to come and sit down here and maybe you copy, you go home, you drop it, you drop your Bible, you want change. No, no. I play my part to pray, to fast, to research, to study, to give you the guiding principles. It is a duty now to apply those principles to go home. How do you become a doctor? You go to school. Lecturers come and lecture you. They will show you the what? The, prince, the, the formulas on how to do operation, cesarean, uh, eye problem, this one. Then you follow those formulas. You can now become what? A solution to man's problem. Is it not true? If you ignore it, you will not. So the people come to church just for coming sake, for jamboree. I don't like people coming to do something for just coming. The church must affect your life. Can you hear me here? Yeah, you need, everybody here need help. Go and apply those keys. You will see how help will come. Stop wasting your time. Stop using your own method. Your own method will not work. We have kingdom formulas. Are we together? You can't use the formula of this one to do this one mathematics. No. Find that what is working here and apply it. You find that God is real. Say so here. He says the God of my father, the God, God gave him victory, I mean help over the Philistines. And I prophesy as a prophet. That in the name of Jesus, everything representing the Philistines in your life, against your destiny, against your finance, against your life, in this month of divine help, ah, God will arise for you and give you victory over the name of Jesus. He will give you victory over them in the name of Jesus. They are oppressions in your life. I decree has come to an end. By divine help, it has come to an end. It has come to an end. In the name of Jesus. Sit down, sit down. Let's now start. How do I get divine help? We have seen men that God have helped. Every man that have achieved greater in the Bible days is a, was a man helped by God. Even in our own days, we have seen men that God have helped. Testimonies are proofs of the help of God in our life each day we gather. So, what will I do to provoke or to assess that divine help? In John 14 verse 26, you must depend on the Holy Spirit or let me use the word, be a friend of the Holy Spirit. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Can you go to... Uh, uh, New King James, it says the helper, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Now look at me here. Now what does it mean? Listen to me. We must be a friend to the Holy Spirit. There are many of us today who are born again, but not spirit filled. And you cannot serve God well without the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the God that works with us in our generation. God the Father has finished his work. God the Son came and did his own. And he left us with what? The Holy Spirit. So for you to find help from God, you must walk in alliance with the Holy Spirit. Are we here? Because at times, 
we've missed the help of God because we don't have any relationship with the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I'm living, but I'll send you the helper. In other words, I will help you through the workings of the Holy Spirit. I will help you through the workings of the Holy Spirit. And how does the Holy Spirit help? Go back there again. I'm going to be fast this morning. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send me, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things I've said to you. The Holy Spirit helps us through what? Teaching and through remembrance, which means instruction, guidance. At times you see, you wake up in the morning, the Spirit of God is telling you, uh, just go and pray. Or this night, wake up and pray. That's where the help is coming from. By teaching. By bringing to remembrance what you need to do. Many of us hear from the Holy Spirit, but because we don't give him attention, that's the only problem. We don't give him attention. When he's saying to us, go oh, sit down, you stand up. He's saying to you, okay, go here today, you do the other one. So at a point, you keep on grieving him. He can't get your cooperation. He doesn't get your attention. So he started being quiet. But he speaks to everybody, every time, everywhere. I gave you an illustration before. That's my view, I've woken up one day, maybe you are cooking food, and as a cup, you drank water. The Holy Spirit will tell you, remove this cup, it will break. You are, you are busy trying to do something. And before you know it, your hand will touch it. Ah, it's, ah, something told me. Holy Ghost is something. It has become something. Is it not true? Has it, is it not true? It's not something. It's the Holy Spirit. It's a personality. It's not a wind. When you're acknowledging to be a personality and it's around you, though it's invisible, but it's real, then when he talks to you as a child of God, you follow instruction. That's why if help can come quickly. That's why we miss it. Some of you, have you never seen that at times? You didn't plan to pray, but you have this prompting to say, start praying. And you find yourself praying. The kind of prayer points coming to you, you didn't plan it. Have I talked to you before? You see yourself praying, vibrating. When you finish praying like this, you look at time. You couldn't pray for two minutes. It is 25 minutes. Have you noticed it? Yeah. Oh, oh. So, he ministers to you and says, do this. You did it. After you have gone, something happened there. You say, wow. Something told me to leave. And only I left, something happened. That's the Holy Spirit. When you begin to st stop seeing him as something, and see him as a personality sent to help you, you make him your friend, making him your comforter, begin to listen to him. Divine help become far. I interact with him, even when I'm in my car, even when I'm in my office, if I'm bathing, even this morning, I'm meditating. I, 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 I get more of him. He say he will teach you the word. He will teach you. So anytime you're always meditating on the word of God, the Holy Spirit begins to minister to you. That's the connection point between you and the Holy Spirit. And when he ministers to you, you give him attention. He needs your attention. You know, you can stand. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 4 that and the hour is coming and now is the hour when the true worshippers will worship God what? In spirit and in truth. So the reason why you can't find divine help is because you are far from the Holy Spirit and he's the one sent to help you. So he can't get your attention to teach you or to direct you to manifest the help of God. That's a problem. The other day, last week, I was flying. Where is this one? I was at the airport. I've already checked in. I've boarded every other, um, checked in on the aircraft, checked in, the international one. Which day was that? Sunday. The international one. I was I'm not supposed to be a second service. Remember, I came with my gene that day Hope was preaching. He didn't see my gene. <laughs> uh, acknowledge now that you saw it. Uh. You're not pretending now. That day you were looking at me when I came in. So, so, you saw that I came in, I was already dressed to fly, but they, oh, they bought the first international flight. I've taken my boarding pass, the local one, but I got up, something, and my spirit said to me, go back. That was why from that airport you saw me come back. I didn't know what is waiting for himself there, yeah, but he said, go what? Back. If I have circuit, I've already dressed, I've already gotten my boarding pass, I now move as macho. I will not enter into what? The camp of the enemy. And you say, ah! He's a pastor, where is God? But he told you. And if you look at every time you are messed up, he has warned you. Check what? Many of you, you are praying, you, you know, because you, are, you like money. All in your mind is that God give me money. But God will have ministered to you, do this thing. Just do this thing. 
just think of this, but you ignore it. So you now look as if God is not there to help you. But the only thing that the source, the channel through which the help comes, you ignore it, you block it. You hear me? Your Christianity will become very powerful and joyful when you make the Holy Spirit a senior partner. When you're making your teacher. When you wake up in the morning after your board session, you ask the Holy Spirit, you are my helper, you're my comforter, I rely on you, guide me, take me, help me. You see that the kind of things that happen to you, you begin to wonder, how is it? You enter in a place, he will tell you, don't sit down, go and sit down here. When you sit down here, somebody will come and sit down there, he will help you. But because you refuse to sit down here, when the person sat there, he couldn't communicate with you, you miss your divine helper. Ah, it's very good. You just watch me enter the ekara times. People sit with me. I mess them up. As we see two, three minutes, at times, I just, the name will pop up. I just say, uh, Mr. This, how are you? Ah, why do you know me? Ha! Ah, ah. My friend, you see this, 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 this screaming. When I want to do them for, I say, ah, how is this so and so person? Maybe their son. He said, wow, you know me to the house. I know you to the house. Holy Ghost knows it. <laughs> it's God Almighty. I'm making sense here. Even that business you are struggling with, if you listen to the Holy Spirit, he will give you what to do. I'm the one telling you. He will guide you. He will guide you. Because if we don't need him, God wouldn't send him. Just because I said, don't bother yourself. Don't be, don't be tired. Don't be weak. Don't bother. I'm going. But I will send you what? A helper. And if you're here, you don't have the Holy Spirit. As you shut up and receive the Holy Spirit. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. John 15 verse 26. We read 14, 26. John 15, 26. Yeah. But when the helper comes, who comes? The helper. Whom I shall send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. The helper is the Holy Spirit. The helper is what? The Holy Spirit. When you want divine help, go after the Holy Spirit. If you are not even baptized in the Holy Spirit, you don't have him, just you, all you need is to band, build and tell the Father, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And most of you, I'm sure you are filled, but just like you don't allow him. Some of you cannot even speak, pray his language. You, you don't speak. You, you, you are too bottled up with your flesh. No. You have to open up. He's a, he's a helper. You don't have another helper. I can't help you. You can't help yourself. He's a comforter that will help you. Are we together? Even when you carry the Holy Spirit, you see, you pray, miracles happen. Your business will explode. Ideas will come. Don't go and do this. Do it this way. You see result. Praise the Lord. Let's look at it again. Are we here? Lift up your right hand and say, Father, fill me. With the Holy Spirit. Say it again. Now pray it in one minute. Pray it as a prayer in one minute. So it shall be in Jesus name. Acts 13. 1 and 2. Acts of the Apostles 13. 1 and 2. Now in the church that was at Antioch. There were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas Simon who called called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Maniam, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrat and Saul. Go ahead. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the, the, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. The Holy Spirit said, he's a speaking spirit. He said to them, separate me. In their confusion, they find help through what? The ministry. Of the Holy Spirit. Separate them. In Acts 21, 10, 11. Acts 21, 10, 11. And as we stayed many days, a certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. When he had come to us, he took Paul's belt, bound his own hands and feet, and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, so shall the Jew, Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Remember, 
Prophet Agabus, through the help of the Holy Spirit, came where the apostles were. You know, they used to wear rope. And when they wear rope, they used to have this ghetto to keep the rope. So, you know, maybe they were arresting or they were buffing. When the prophet Agabus entered there, Holy Spirit said to him, take this. He took that one and wrapped his hand and said, whoever that owns this, as I am bound, so he shall be bound as he go to Jerusalem. And Peter went to Jerusalem. I mean, Paul, they nearly killed him. I hope you know the story. Yeah, then he ran away by force because his ministry was for the Gentiles, not for the Jews. Peter was called for the Jews, Paul for the Gentiles. But now he now went there to go and showcase the ministry. They grabbed him. But the Holy Spirit has already revealed it, helped him by speaking to Agabus. Is anybody hearing me here? So the Holy Spirit speaks. The problem we have is that uh, the human being, we give attention to the flesh much. What our flesh needs. And the two of them are in enmity. The flesh and the spirit. Yeah. Your flesh may, okay, let me fast. But the Holy Spirit said, go on. I mean, let me eat. I've cooked a very powerful stew. And that stew has chicken, turkey, we agree, it is there already. And Amaka has cooked it for you, pack in your fridge. The Holy Spirit is saying, go and fast. The Holy Spirit is saying, no, you fasted last week, go and organize it. You see the problem? Yeah. And when you say go and fast, you wouldn't know why he says you should fast. Maybe when you started fasting, he started speaking, communicating to you the more. Because what God does is that when he speaks one, just like prophesy, you want to prophesy. If I want to prophesy now, and I say, let's rise up, let's pray. You may not like call you up. Maybe he may say, call him up. He will not even tell me what to do. Are you getting me here? You may not like call you up. You see, the, the term begin to come. When I say that one, it will come. When I stop saying, it will cease. That is how it works. So he's a speaking spirit. That's the only way we can find what to help. And how to work with the Holy Spirit is not to be carnal. And carnality is sponsored by two things. What your flesh wants, not what God wants. And number two, what your eyes can see. These things will distract you. Listen, you cannot walk in divine direction and not find divine help. You cannot work in divine direction and not find divine help. The problem is that we are walking out of divine direction and want divine help. No, we can't get it. I want this. I want this. I want this. No. What does the Holy Spirit want? You don't know what will happen the next week. You don't know the future. They know the future. So align with him, you find, because he, he, only him communicates the mind of God. Only him knows the mind of God. So only him can give you the help you're looking for from God. Is anybody in the house here? When I was told to come to South Africa, I didn't want to come here. Me. Because I've, I've, I've been here in 2006 when I was going to Zambia for Christ's crusade. So I used to stop in Joburg and preach. I didn't like, you know, Christianity here was different from where I'm coming from. You see, people then will come to church. They will come with their, their uh, girlfriend. I will ask the man of God. He said, no, it's their girlfriend. I don't marry. It's just girlfriend. It was the first time I started hearing about girlfriend. No, it's not the language you talk in our place. Uh -huh. So I say, ah. people will be in the church. Pastor is preaching. They are hugging. And people will kiss him. <laughs> and now, no. So when I saw the thing, I saw it the first time I didn't talk much. Because where I'm coming from, it's not happening that way. You understand? Second time again, I, I came and preached. Then I went to preach in one pastor, Monquera, in that place. People came to church drunk. People go outside and smoke and come in. So, and now I cross my heart. I said, this is not what? The kind of Christianity. Church will be for uh, nine o'clock. By 11, people are still walking. Pastor is preaching. Pastor will not complain. So, what did I do? I now had in my heart. When the Lord told me, go to South Africa. Ah? Huh? I said, no, I'm not going to Africa. One, the church in Nigeria was already, you know, it's bigger than this one. We're already running up, down. I mean, that time we have not built. We're already running overflow. The whole street we packed. And there now, six o'clock, my night vigil, my all night was one night I used to do. By six o'clock in the evening, inside is full. People will come from work, put their tents and go. It's packed full. Then I said, I decided not to go. 
And I refuse to tell my wife because I know she would tell me, ah, you know, uh, honey, you see, you have to follow the spirit of God. So I decided I would not tell her for good one year. And number two, the church was growing. Workforce have grown. Protocols pack everywhere. We should have not less than 20-something protocols, ushers, everything was working perfectly. We already bought our land, put temporary structure, fill it, expanded, you know. Everywhere in Okota was, was supposed to go to church, was supposed to go to church. People were rushing. Ah, it was happy. And easy for me, I will fly from there. When I go to Europe, I, I brought in my trucks. They put it, they sell for me. I was so excited. God said, leave and go. To go and do what? Who will be the usher? Who will be the distant? Can you hear what I'm trying to say? I refuse. I will not lie. Then one year after, one day I was praying. We were praying. First, the Lord opened my eye. Pa! I saw people put in a local fence with, with wood ch- bound in there. They were all on chains. He said, go to Cape Town, set them free. Immediately that thing happened. He came with me with like, I lost my peace, the body. And now to have a excuse, because can, people can give a excuse. I said, God, we just moved to a new place. We are standing there, there's no money in the church. He said, but you have a car. There was no money in the church. We had just moved to a new place, extending. Say, you, you got a car. I said, okay. I told my wife. In fact, the first thing I did was to start up a fellowship in Pretoria. There was one guy, when I went to Zambia, he was crippled. He was a pastor. He went to do deliverance. They crippled him. So I came and I ministered to him. He started working. So he moved to South Africa. So okay, start running fellowship every Tuesday so that God can let me be in Nigeria. He said, no, go. And I walk in. <clears throat> I came. Everything around me did not. Because I'm going to start off fresh here. No worker, nothing. But 2010 to 2013, I've reached, or well, seen all of you today. Is it not true? <laughs> now, <clears throat> we, <clears throat> we've, we've started in America. In Zimbabwe has been built. Swaziland has been built. Nesprut, Pumalanga, all these branches, even the Nigeria, even the Benin, all here. But if I had followed what I could see that time, maybe I would have been stranded in, in Nigeria now. You're not, you're not with me here. Yeah, because that time looked more better. Workers were there. And I'm going to a place I don't have anybody to go. But I step out. Look at the impact today. I wouldn't have met you. Some of you would have been drowned inside Igbo, in their help, in their help. Maybe some of you now, you'll be smoking from, the smoke will come from your nose, from your eyes everywhere. Go and see that. But look at most of you today. <clears throat> look at some of you today. You are, when I see you people praying, uh, leading prayer, you don't know the kind of joy. I, I have around it. Look at the people like Pastor Stanley today. Look at most of them now are winning soul because I obeyed. Look at Swaziland. Look at Zimbabwe. I finished building. Look, just look at it happen. Look at Maitland here today. Look at Nespro. Look at all those branches. Because of what? The Holy Spirit. I would have been in Nigeria. Maybe by now they would have shot me at the leg because I was where I'm not supposed to be at time. You're not hearing me. And I, I will leap in now and say, Where is God of the habit? <laughs> Are we here? Yeah. So I'm not making sense here. At times, the flesh only sees now. The spirit sees tomorrow. May God give you the Holy Spirit. And I pray for you that every disconnection between you and the spirit of God, as you shut him, may God connect you back in the name of Jesus. So that is how it works. That single obedience, I didn't see. And South Africa was, kept on was even the worst. But today, God has proved himself to be what? To be God. So, that is the, where you find help. Please, please, you need divine help. You need the help, which is the Holy Spirit. But that I don't have it, it's free for all. As long as you're born again, you're qualified for it. You bow your head, they pray, you pray for yourself. At times, it can be imparted through other people's impartation. But I can tell you, most of you, you have it just like you have not recognized him as your helper. Say, I hear. Say, I hear. Did you get it right there? 
So he's a source and a channel of divine help. Number two for today, in 1 Kings 4 verse 8, sensitivity, not predictability. In other words, be sensitive, not predictive. First Kings 4, 8. These are their names. Is it First Kings and Second Kings? Okay, let me let me look at look at let's look at Second Kings for it first. Let me okay. Now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shunem, where there was a notable woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. Go ahead. And she said to her husband, look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by a regular. The other one said, I perceived, I perceived. Look now, I perceived that this is a what? A holy man of God. Look at me. If you want to find divine help, you don't walk by what? Predicting God. You have to be sensitive. Sensitivity. Many of us cannot find the hand help because we're not sensitive. Even though God has helped us. But we're not sensitive enough to detect what God has done. We are so, we walk in the realm of prediction. You predict God, how God should do it. How God should answer. How God should respond. How God should work. No. The Bible said she perceived. She was so sensitive to know that my help is here. Even though she didn't need any help, but she perceived this is a man of God. Let's do something for him. And remember, that man has been a source of divine help. But until she became sensitive to perceive it, she never found the help. You're not hearing me here. The help was there already. But she was what? Insensitive. And she couldn't find the help. Don't predict God if you want God to help you. Don't decide how God will answer you. Don't decide who God will use. Don't assume how God will do it. No. Your own is to be what? Be only sensitive, be spiritual. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. And allow God to do it the best way he knows he should reach you. That God reach your brother this way must not be the same way he will reach you. Are we in this house at all? So that is where we miss this help a lot. Let's go to 1 Samuel 30 from verse 9. 1 Samuel 30 verse from verse 9. Because the person God will use to reach me may not be the person he will use to reach you. How he used to do it for you is not the how he used to do it for me. So you can't predict God. Yeah, you only align by being sensitive. So David went, first Samuel. Okay, David went, he and the 600 men that were with him, and came to the brook Basel, where those who were left behind stayed. But David pursued and found 100 men, for 200 about behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook Basel. Go ahead. And they found an Egyptian in the field and they brought him to David and gave him bread and he did it and they made him drink water. They, and they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him for he had eaten no bread nor drink any water three days and three nights. Go ahead. And David said unto him, To whom belongeth thou, and whence art thou? And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant of the Amalekites. And by my master left me, because three days are gone, I fell sick. We made an invasion upon the south of Cheritites, and upon the coast which belongeth to Judah, and upon the south of Caleb, and we burnt Ziglag with fire. And David said to him, Cast thou 
canst thou bring me down to this company? And he said, swear unto me, my God, that thou will not kill me, nor deliver me in the hands of my master. And I will bring thee into the hand. Look at what happened. David went to fight for God. And suddenly, Ziklag was invaded. And Ziklag was destroyed. Then they took everybody captive. David, his soldiers, the entire city was taken captive. David came and prayed, God, can I pursue and overtake? God says, pursue and overtake. Ladies and gentlemen, David began to pursue without direction. He didn't know where they were. But he heard God say, I will do it. So as David embarked on the trip, they met, they met a young Egyptian who was at the verge of death because at that point in time, he had not ate food. They came with their king to destroy the Ziglag. But along the road, he was sick. They left him to die. So when they found him, David boys found him, they gave him food and gave him drink. They did not know that look at the help where he's coming. You're not hearing me here. They did not that the dying boy of the Egyptian was the one that has the answer to the help God has offered. So if you predict God, you miss divine help. You're not together. If you predict God, who would have believed that God said, go, pursue, overtake? He started going. It would have been people who are smart, people who are sensitive, people who are knowledgeable enough, but it was a man who was dying. Assuming they ignored that man who was dying because they have a way that I think God will answer the prayer. They will all soft go in vain and come back and may eventually lose those family there, but because of what? Sensitivity. Don't predict God. Many of you have missed divine help by predicting God. Somebody came to church and sat before you. Even when they say, wake up and greet a new person, you couldn't even rise with joy and say, God bless you. It may be the man God has sent around you. That the way he greeted him, he can say, ah, who are you? What do you do for a living? Or you become his friend and the answer is with him. But you sat on the chair and maybe you're looking around for somebody else who will help you. So at times, insensitivity denies men what? Divine help. They didn't know that the boy, they only helped him because he was stranded. They didn't know the, the help was embedded, wrapped up on the inside of that young man who was about dying. May God open your eyes. I say, may God open your eyes. May he make you more sensitive in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And how many of us have missed such opportunities? Because the thing we are looking for is not packaged the way we want it. That's just it. That was how Israel would miss salvation. Because they thought Messiah will come and will be born in the palace. But he was born in the manger. Among the animals, they say, no, it cannot be the Messiah. They miss salvation. So please, every child of God that needs divine help must walk with the Holy Spirit and must be what? Sensitive. Don't be predictive. Don't predict God. Don't predict God. You, you need high level of spiritual perception. High level of what? Spiritual perception. Or else you miss out of divine help. Hear me. A man God will help. Will drop his human knowledge. Drop your human knowledge. Drop your human calculation. Because human calculation can only work now. It cannot work tomorrow. It's only God that determines the future. The God who wants to help you is the one who knows how he wants to help you. God, when he wants to help you, only him knows how he wants to help you. It is not to you that will determine how God will help you. Am we making sense here? Because most of you have been helped. Prayer has been answered. But because you want to predict God, you want to determine how God was answered, how God will work. And when you now miss how God is working, Let's look at another scripture here. In 1 Samuel. Okay, let's look at 2 Kings 5 verse 2. 2 Kings 5, 2 and 3. 2 Kings 5, 2 and 3. And the Syrian had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel. A little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife the husband of Naaman, and she said unto her mistress, would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would have recovered him of the lepro his leprosy. Yes. And one, one went in and told his Lord, saying, 
thus and thus say the maid that is in the land of Israel. Look at it. They went and had the maid. Neman. The girl was helping them. And she saw that the, the, their master was leprous. He now one day told Masaya, assuming that my master know the, the prophet in Israel, where I'm coming from, it will him of leprosy. The maid. Some people today bring maid in their house and turn them to, 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 to punching machine, to dogs. Now, even dogs are better here because dogs have their food here. I mean, dogs in Nigeria. Yeah, that will eat bone, that will eat everything. No. They didn't know the solution God wanted to use to heal the man was with the maid in the house. Can you hear me? That business you may be ignoring, maybe where God has done to help you. Because you want to follow the ones your friends are doing, the one that will give you one billion one day. Yeah. So be sensitive instead of being predictive. I say, sir, if they can go. So they, they, say, they went and told him, say, look at this monger, what she said. Though. It may make sense that this prophet in our place can hear. They said, sir, he went. He went. When Neman got there, he didn't see the prophet. The prophet said, go and tell him to go and watch his friends. He got angry. Because anytime you come to office, you want to see daddy. Yeah. I've been in this church now. Nobody give my attention. You don't need the attention. You need intervention. Is that clear? You don't need what? My attention. First, what you need is what? Intervention in your need. He came back and said, ah, what is this kind of thing? Me, commander of the army, went to see a prophet. He couldn't come out of his house and come and see me. And now he's saying I should go to the water. We have a time reverse in my place. The little guy said to her, if they have asked you to do worse thing, wouldn't you have done, sir? The thing struck him. He went and came out. Wow! How did it happen? Small girl. Look at Saul when he was looking for lost acts. About to go. The son said, no, let's not go. There's a man of God here. Hear me. God will wrap solution in what does not look like one. It takes sensitivity to assess it. You're not with me here. If you are preempting God, how God will walk, you will not find divine help. If you made up your mind, how God will answer prayer, he will not answer you. He will answer you, you will not see it because you don't know. If you made up your mind that God is going to walk this way, you fail. So please, you have to wake up to be what? Sensitive spiritually. As long as you need the help from God, you're not offering the help yourself. Don't decide how God will do it. Let God do it his own way. But only be what? Be, be, be sensitive to say, so that anyhow God is doing it, you can grab it. In this case, case, uh, I mean, case studies now, none of these children were qualified to be used by God to carry out his what? Deliverance. But God did it. A dying boy, a maid in the house, a servant of Saul, they were all used to profile what? Divine help. Sir here. Am I talking to anybody here? And that is why whenever you are anywhere, people, people come across to you, maybe less privileged to serve it. Don't treat them bad. Are you hearing me? <clears throat> if you, are, you can send your own children to school and your maid need to go to school, encourage her to go. Don't bother. Whatever a man saw, he will reap. I see people, you see people, especially where I'm coming from, Nigeria, they treat maid like criminals. You beat them, and you end up seeing that that maid that beat them become better than their children. Because they were the one being trained. So tell your neighbor, be sensitive. Don't be predictive. Stop predicting God. Be open and see how God will come to you. Praise God. Are we getting blessed at all? Number three. Maybe if I like, I stop here. <laughs> Psalm 46 verse 10. Psalm 46 verse 10. Be still and know that I'm God. And I will be exalted among the hidden. And I'll be exalted in the earth. Can we read together everybody here? One to go.
Now listen to me. Do you know why most of us can't be sensitive? Most of us can't find divine help. We are not still in spirit when there is need. Be still and know. Most of us, the kind of worries, trouble, trauma, despair, every small challenge put us to can never allow you to hear God. Even if God used microphone, you will not hear. No, it's true. Even if God used microphone and speak in your house, you will not hear because already you have been uh, engulfed. You've been engulfed with that thing you're going through. So every channel of communication is over. Listen to me. God can never walk with a man when there's no spirit, I mean, stillness in your spirit. You cannot hear God. A light that ran away from Jezebel. The Bible says there was wind. I thought God was there. There was fire. I thought God was there. After that, there was a small, still voice. Now, you have to be still in your spirit. Can you hear me here? To walk with God. Calmness of spirit is a demonstration of faith in what God can do. You are so worried. You are so worried not to remain in worry. So worried. So worried. Hello? He told Moses, be still and see the salvation of the Lord. Be still and see what? The salvation of the Lord. From Exodus 14, from verse 14, be still and see. You cannot see God's help when you are occupied with worries, emotional trauma because of one challenge. And those things cannot solve the problem. So learn to be still in the face of what? Your storm. Say here. Learn to be still in the face of your trauma. Learn to be still in the face of those challenge you are facing. If you want to find divine help. Many of us, you know, you are weeping, you are crying, you are doing this one. It does not bring the solution. Try to comport yourself. Always remember you have a God that can solve the problem. Don't kill yourself before the problem, the solution will come. Be still in your spirit so that God can direct you on what next to do, how to go about it. You need to be still in spirit and mind to get God involved in that situation. Is that clear? Yeah. Stillness or calmness of the spirit in time of need is an expression of great faith in God. And God can never ignore faith. And faith is all you need to get God involved to meet all your needs. Faith is all you need to get God involved to meet all your needs. And you can never be troubled and say, I still have faith. Stillness and calmness of the spirit is very, very important. Very, very important. Yes, God wants to walk. God wants to walk. He will walk. Showcase his power. He showcase his strength only when you are calm. So I hear. So you need to be still in, still in spirit to hear the voice of the helper. Anxiety robs you of your spiritual capacity. Anxiety robs you of what? Your spiritual capacity. And when a man is robbed of his spiritual capacity, he ends up in spiritual captivity. Anxiety robs you of your spiritual capacity. And when you are robbed of your spiritual capacity, you end up in spiritual captivity. Hey, I'm worried, I'm discouraged, I'm traumatized. Yeah, but I have not read in my Bible why the Bible says, assume the Bible says, oh, when you are discouraged, answer will come. Then I'll be, I'll be more discouraged than you. If the Bible says you are traumatized and it's a solution, I will now uh, 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 traumatize and rasmatize and know that I dwell inside of it and drown inside of it. It doesn't have solution. Then if the Bible says, ah, 
when you are discouraged, you are traumatized, you are worried, answer will come. Ah, everybody in worry would have got an answer. Yeah. But it's not that way. So in time of need, don't go for what you already need. Go for what will solve the need. Calmness of mind. I know my redeemer live it. Job fried. He said, Lord, I've gone before. I couldn't find you. Backward, you are not there. Right, no. Left, you're not there. One thing I know, calmness. One thing I know. When I've gone through this things, I will comfort like gold. And when he come down, can you hear me here? Then God step in. You are too worried to find God in your, to help you. When David was crying, the Bible said David wept. And what? And encouraged serving the Lord. When he came down and went to God for answer, did God hear him? He got answer. He said, you can go. But when he was crying, what, where are you? I went to fight for you. I've given my tithe. And I give my friend. In fact, even last week, I gave tithe. Oh, 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 tithe, tithe. <laughs> it doesn't move God. There's no faith in it. But pick up the word of God. And say, daddy, you said, cast all your burdens upon me for I care. This is bigger than me. But I have a bigger God. Father, I hand it over to you. Glorify yourself in this situation. You wake up and say, Worthy, worthy are you, Lord. Worthy, worthy are you, Lord. Worthy are you, Lord. Worthy, worthy are you, Lord. Devil will send his idiot demon. And say, who is singing that to be song? He says, is that same one? He, she's not crying. No. She's singing. He say, leave that idiot. Leave her. Come out. Let's, it's an idiot. I thought she'll be crying and, and deny his God. She's even singing. Let's leave her. That is how it works. I've been praying. I've been praying. I don't know what I've done. You have didn't pray anything. You pray out of fear. If there is faith, there be calmness. When you have prayed and know God has prayed, what do you do? You relax and wait for him to walk. And he will tell you what to do. The Bible says you will hear a still small voice saying, go this way. Say, I hear. Come on, say, I hear. So anxiety robs you of your spiritual capacity. Please, what you need is what? Faith. Is there any small time? Okay, let me give the last point today. Second Chronicles chapter 27 from verse 1. Second Chronicles 7 from verse 1 through 7. Jonathan was 25 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 60 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. Go ahead. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord according to all his father Uzziah did. How be it entered not to the temple of the Lord, and the people did yet corruptly. Yeah? He built the high gate of the house of the Lord, and on the wall of Ophel he built much. Moreover, he built cities in the mountains of Judah, and in the forest he built castles. Can you see his, his exploit? His resume. Go ahead. He fought also with the king of the Amorites and prevailed against them. And the children of Israel, I mean, of Ammon, gave him the same year, 100 talents of silver, and there 1,000 measures of wheat, and 10,000 of barley. So much did the children of Israel, Ammon pay unto him, both the second year and the third. Go ahead. So Jotam became mighty because he prepared his way before the Lord his God. Last verse. Now, the rest of the acts of Jordan and all. Can you see? From chapter 1 to chapter 5 were his accomplishments, his resumes. But how did he arrive here? How did God help him? He prepared what? His way before the Lord. Any man that wants divine help must be a man that prepared his way before God. Are we in the house? Hebrew 12, 13. Hebrew 12, 14. 12, 14, please. Hebrew 12, 14. Some people want divine help, but they don't obey God. They live carelessly. 
their lives are expression of rascality. Are you getting me here? They do wrong things with every measure of bellicosity and assume that things will work out. So, they debilitate the glory of God and nothing works. Don't laugh at me. I'm not... <laughs> Am I going to get employment? Uh, next, by even itself, the ones I blow will be bigger than this one. That's the only way I enjoy my school fees. <laughs> Sit down. I'm not going to get job again. Is it not true? No company will employ me now. Uh, they will say I'm old. Uh, some of them will say you have too much certificate. Uh, so how do I enjoy the 10? I blow it. At times I blow it and then my wife will get confused. He said, this is, I said, I, I said, sit down and listen to what I'm talking about. And when I threw them, he said, this one, I've not had this one before. This one doesn't exist. I go to a dictionary. Everyone I speak exists. So please go there. Let's see. Let's see. Let's close here. Most of you don't want to go today because the AC is working in your house now. Maybe the, the light, will go, light will go off, power will go off. <laughs> Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man can see the Lord. Listen to me. Seeing God here is not good because if you see God, you will die. Very yummy. Yeah, don't go and pray, Daddy. God, let me see your face. You will die. Yo. <laughs> what you need is what? To see God is find the help of God. Is that clear? Yeah. So Bible said, follow peace with men and holiness. Jotam accomplished all because God helped him. How did God help him? He prepared his way. Child of God, listen to me. Prepare your way. Prepare your way. Those that prepare their ways are those who make waves. The Bible said there's a way that seemed good to a man. You may think I'm enjoying. I'm thinking I'm, I, I have my life. Ladies and gentlemen, don't, no more they have life. You only know you don't have life when you go to the morgue or the mortuary and see lifeless people. You know you don't have life. So the time you have, prepare your way before the Lord so that the Lord can help you. Be in peace with all men. You cannot be a believer and you are, you, you are, you are quarreled with everybody. You cannot be a believer. You live in unforgiveness. You live on unrighteousness and you are praying, God, oh, God of my father, the harbinger, help me. Yes, God will hear and bring a record. And they see have not prepared their way. Because any help given to a man whose ways are not prepared, can you hear me here? We no longer benefit God or help the man. Just imagine you. You are, you are a, 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 a drunkard. You are a, a womanizer or a manizer. And, event, and eventually, God gives you what? One million dollars. What happens? Yes, we finish. Your, 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 your house becomes what? Charlotte. Is it not true? And maybe you get sickness, you even uh, the, the, the die. So God will say, ah, I love this, my son. He's a worker. If I give him this money, I'll finish him. God will say, no. Having the God tend to prepare his way. I'll give him that help. So in every situation you find yourself, watch, you are part of it. Are we together? Dotan prepare his way. The man that refused to die. He went to coma and came back. Have you been to coma before? Uh, that's why you're looking at me that way. Sit down. We're going to close now. Sit down. Are we together here? Are you excited? Remember I've told you. Listen. The devil fights you as a believer through human beings. Offense will come. They offend you. You had in your heart. I don't want to forgive them. They go their way. You are the one losing on the two sides. Sides of God, side of men. Forgive them and move your way. I've given you key on how to deal with people. When people come around you, you tell them your secret, they go and gossip you, you got offended. Next time, don't tell them. They borrow from you, they can't pay. Next time they come, don't borrow them. Help, give them. You want to help them, so okay, take one, one round and go. So whatever the devil is doing, must do. He must do it through human being. 
what God must do through human beings. So he said, be in peace with all men and live what to right. Holiness. Huh? You are praying for divine help. God help me, God help me. And God even, the little food I've given to you, you are mismanaging the fund. You are mismanaging it. You tell your, your wife, I want to go and meet my friends. You are going to somewhere. You don't know that when you, the girl, God is watching now. God will answer, okay, because of this 200,000 I gave to you now. Hey, you will not, like, next time, when you finish that one and come back, you will not answer. You will bend on this altar for one year. You know, you, with your buttocks up, God is not hearing you. You think that God is wicked. It's not wicked. It's because you have not prepared your way. Are we together? Yeah. Be in peace with all men. Prepare your way. God is around to help us. Go back to yourself and be honest to yourself. Can you hear me here? Yeah. Judge yourself. See what the devil is using to fight you. Deal with it and come to God as you are. He will help you. Be in peace with men. Can I end it here telling you, no matter how you pray, offense will come. Better make up your mind. One man of God told us that uh, he, oh, he forgives people 100 times before they offend him once. So it means make up your mind. Even if you leave your house, your complex, join another complex. As long as you meet with men, that's a problem. And don't forget this. I want to tell you now before we close. Don't tell anybody. It's a secret between me and you and God. Now listen this into carefully. Many are times Many conflicts that comes around is demons' devices to stop the flow and connection with God. You're not hearing me. It can come between you and your siblings, between you and your parents, between you and your family, between you and your spouse, between you and friends around you. So you must know now that devil can never get to you without going through human being. Therefore, since human being are his channel, device a means of what? Dealing with the human being. There are some people who, let me tell you something, whether you like it or not, that is their nature. As long as you deal with them, you must get offended. What do you do? Now, strategize on how to work with them. Don't be their best friend. Eh? I gave him money last time. He didn't bring it. Gave him a second time. You gave the third one. No, when he comes again, okay, please, uh, lend me 10,000. He said, oh, bros, I don't have 10,000, but I can, I can assist you to 1,000. Because you know he will not bring uh -huh. So tomorrow you won't be offended. You, now, tomorrow now you are good. Now is what is the devil using, using against you. Your good is blocking your heaven. No. So anytime the devil, there's a conflict around you, don't see human being. See the devil coming around. Is that clear? It will help you to stop him and God will give you victory. And I declare and I declare, help is coming for you. As you apply these principles, help is coming your way. You will never again be stranded in life in the name of Jesus. Before you call, God will answer. Before you call, God will hear you. In the name of Jesus. That situation that caused you nightmare, as you stand up and shout, Amen, this month, God will come for you. In the name of Jesus. Every area, the Bible says his hand is not short, no, his ear deaf, not to hear us. Every area, you are crying and say, God, how can I come out of this issue? May God send you help. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Bow down your head. Talk to him. He said, my hands are not shut. No, my ears deaf. But our sin has become a barrier. Bow down your head. And come to him as you are. Look at those things that is being... I mean, a stumbling block, drop them here on his feet. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, before I pray for everybody, please don't forget, God can only help his own children. And nobody is a child of God except those who accept his only son, Jesus. That qualifies to be a child of God and qualifies for divine help. If you're here this morning and you know you're not giving your life to Christ, look at the consequence. If you're not, you don't have Christ in you, 
you will die again after this death. It will end in hellfire. If you have Christ in you, you will die once and not die again. Number two, you can't find help outside of Jesus. You can't find the Holy Spirit without having Jesus. So the starting point is to give your life to Christ so I can forgive your sin and reconcile you with God so that God can find reason to help you. So if you're here this morning, you're not born again. You're not giving your life to Christ. Please, do it with joy. Lift up your right hand to Jesus. Let me lead you to Christ. It doesn't cost you money. It doesn't cost you your time. It just only costs you your faith. Can you guys see your hands worth that Jesus? If you want to give your life to Christ, anybody here? You've not done that genuinely before. You want to do it. Then if there is none, hear me. I've taught you on how to get divine help. God has told us he wants to help us. He's ready to help us. So go back to your scriptures, to your note, and look at this. But above all, don't forget. Prepare your way before the Lord. Is that clear? Whatever you see that bring an enmity between you and God, you all know it. Do away with them. When you prepare your way before God, he makes you mighty. He makes your future mighty. Is anybody in the house? Father, I lift up my hands and I pray for them. Gracious God, this morning, open each one's eye to discover the areas they need to do the adjustment and amendments. Help them to prepare our ways. Help us by your mercy to prepare our ways so that we can find divine help. You made Jota mighty. Lord, as we prepare our ways, make us mighty. Help us become sensitive. Give us the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. The Lord will begin to hear you clearly through your spirit and begin to follow your instructions in the name of Jesus. Gracious God, I ask that may no one of them today that hear me, that heard me this morning at any point in time become stranded. Amen. You are the way maker, make a way for them. Amen. In the name of Jesus. That is anyone that cried this morning and came here. Is anyone who is at the verge of giving up? Is anyone who is saying, Lord, when will my turn come? Lord, in this service, by this encounter, may they find your help. Amen. In the name of Jesus. That problem that have come so big to swallow them. Lord, arise. Let your help swallow the problems. Make a way for them. Create a path in their wilderness. Give them victory. <coughs> the men we know, the service the living in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. For in Jesus' name we pray. Put your hands together for celebrating. Restoration Assembly presents Seven Days Miracle Crusade and Church Dedication with Pastor Bodwin and Pastor Meg Nwachuku. Everyone suffering is for a while and after that the Lord will strengthen you, perfect you, establish you and set to you. Team Great God Ministering Bishop Ima Isong Any river or a mountain is very strategic in spiritual warfare. Apostle Dr. Joshua Talina When mistakes are made in the morning season huh, You'll be confused in your afternoon season Prophet Emmanuel Badu Kobe You are not here to be part of people You are here to be above people They should know you by how they see you But they shouldn't know you by who you want to become Apostle Sam Oye You cannot create solutions that will change your life and change generations If there's battle in your mind and ministering in sound, Chioma Jesus. Guest appearance, MC Adopikin C.F.R.O. Abini, you want a joke? 
The new person go open orphanage home. Now children go full inside. Date Sunday 26 March to Sunday 2nd April 2023. Time Monday to Thursday 4 30 p.m. Delhi. Friday Wonders of Praise Night 10 p.m. and on Sunday morning 8 a.m. Venue Church Auditorium opposite White House Peanut Road by Mocha Foam Junction off Sabla Road, Benin City, Adel State, Nigeria. For inquiries and reservation, call 0704 91 53 647. Come and experience the undiluted word of God mixed with power. Jesus is Lord. I'm, I'm here today to testify on the wonderful deliverance of God. Our Miracle. Jesus. On the first of March. On the, on the, on the no, first no, of March, yes, sir. okay, yes, sir. sorry. Go ahead, sir. On the first of March, I, I don't, I have not been to this church before. I, I don't know pastor before, so and I walk from home. So what happened is that um, I was a little tired, and I decided to take a walk, and then I saw a lady that was coming. And that I mean, I just wanted to hear, hey, how are you? Made a little silly joke, and she said to me, "If you want to know me, just come with me to the church." She said to me. Go now and put on your techie, put on your shoes, and come and wait for you at the door. And then I walked like a zombie, went upstairs to my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I walked there, and then I put on dress, I put on my techies, and then I put on my shirt. And then I came to church. Here I, here I am. And then once I walked in here, I hear the daddy say, Imitation, look at me. As I walk around you, you are lose out of it. Thank you, Jesus. The change you are looking for starts now. Amen. There's somebody here, they gave you a dollar in a dream. It was one, like hundred dollar. Who are, who are you? I'm going to drop the camera. I'm talking about dollar, I carry camera. Let me only for you quick. Don't have time. Don't have time. Give me a little Give me a little Put it in my hand. Little bit. Don't put it. Little bit. Come, 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 come. Walk down to me. Fast, fast. Open your hand. Open it. Put it together. Put it together. Take it. Pa. Put it on the floor. Put it on the floor. What to a ginger? Things that they play. Go for manifestation. Let it rain. Like, like water. The blessing of on high and above. Take the name of Jesus. The Lord grant you has there. Yeah. All of you clapping, which means you don't have offering. <laughs> if they're offering your hand, you wouldn't be clapping. Bah, bah, bah. It wouldn't be sounding well. God bless you. Yeah. God. Don't be scared. You know, one problem I used to tell people that. I don't wake up and talk. When I'm speaking, you should know God is speaking. Yeah. Focus your mind on what God says you will do. Forget of whatever you are going through. Is that clear? Yeah. Is that clear? Yes, 
to the fifth person. Rise. Lift up your hand. Look at me. Let the blessing on the deep flow. Thank you. Just help them. Help them. Help them. Help her. Help her. Help her. Help her. Who is that person that he came out for that a thousand dollar when hope came out? Teaching round, but you didn't have enough. But express your faith with the one you had. Come out if you're if you're in service. Come quick. Don't waste my time. Do not waste my time. You brought it in round, but it was not a complete money. Come. The Lord is telling me. You, you exercise your faith. It's not that you had it, you didn't give all, but you didn't have enough to give. Where are you? If you're in service, come out. Come, I want to pray for you. You came out for $1,000. You brought that money in rand, but it was not complete. It was because of what was all you had. Can the person hear English if you're in service? Okay, if you're not in service, you come in second service. Of his best. That is why we say, people, don't miss services. Don't miss services. Choir, let me pray for you, people. I want to close. Just walk down to me, walk down to me. If you have faith, walk, walk down, walk down. Walk down, walk down, walk down. Be fast, be fast, be fast. Be fast, be fast, be fast. It's not easy to be in choir, practicing, doing everything, blessing others. Okay. Now, go back, go back. Let me keep my money well. (laughs) Open your hands. All of you, take, look at me. One, two, three, four, five. Where that five reach, don't move six. Five is grace. Grace is coming to provide help for you. Amen. Look at me, all of you, and don't remove your eyes from me. Elisha, like I told Elisha, if you can see me. Yeah. Number two, let the blessing of the deep let the blessing from above. Let the blessing that will cause you to smile this year, beginning this moment, Amen. rest upon you. Amen. The name of God the Father, Amen. God the Son, Amen. and the Holy Spirit. Amen. But take your step of it again. One, two, yeah, go. Yeah, count it well. Go. To get to five, let grace do it for you. Amen. Ushers. Will help them. There are one, two, three, five of them. The anointing will catapult to the next level. <laughs> Go, it is done. Amen. Have you replaced your car? You have not. You mean it? Because where are the ushers? Remove my jacket. Be fast. Don't walk like a big man. (laughs) Bring him. Bring him fast. Put it on him. Uh Clothe him. See the time. When you put it to put music, then you begin to tune my 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 channel. And by the time you hook the channel of the spirit, then we'll not close short later. You'll not say that he closed you late. Why God is trying to help you. Ah, you go my day, change jacket. Take your own. What? Leave him. Bring it. Bring it, bring it. Take your own. (laughs) 
All of you, do you own one car? All of you have car now? Eh? Yeah, not an usher. You want a what? Take, take a portion. Take. Take some. Put it on the floor. I didn't say you should wage him. You are not caterpillar. Bring my jacket. Don't carry it like bread. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Take more. Bring my jacket, gang. Some of you, when you buy a car, you can touch again. You know how many cars have been dedicated since last year? If they park here, there'll be no space here. Two of us. There won't be one. You won't even have space on the street. Let me take care of them before you change your mind. It's not time. I want to close. What is it? What is it? Is this one you can talk? You have what? It's a pen. Take your healing. Take your healing. Take it. Let the side pen go. Let me wear this clothes before people will go and take it and use it for prayer, prayer today. Huh? You have asthma. Let me, look at me. Every spirit of Ashma, bring her. I don't have time. Spirit, come on, leave her. Go. You can't stay in this temple. No spirit of Ashma is permitted. Come out, you spirit of Ashma. Go, go, go. Get out of her, yes. And pack all your attempts. Bring her, there's no time. It's not deliverance. But hold it for me. Of Jesus. Let the spirit of Asma go. Out. That yoke shall be broken. In the name of Jesus, let the fire of God enter to you. Open your mouth. Come out of her. Go. Go. Anything planted in this body, in this chest, causing asthma. I said the fire of God on it. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You can't stay here again from your root. I cast in the name of Jesus. Amen. Get out. Amen. Open your mouth. Open it. Take the blood of Jesus. Open it. Open it. Open it. Open it. Open it. Blood of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus. I bind the spirit of asthma. I command you, come out. Jesus healed her. You can't trouble her again. Open your hand like this. Look at me. Look at me. Not look at me. Just look at me straight on my eyes. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Open your hands. Open your hands. Leave your head. Just leave yourself. Give me two minutes. Yeah, look at me. Look at me. Look at me, watch me, watch me. Whatever is causing asthma will leave that body. Yeah. It can't remain there again. Yeah. Yeah. Call in the name of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus. Amen. I kill the spirit of us. I declare you free. How long were you having it? Since you got married. It wasn't there before. Don't go married, began to experience it. Give me a water, please, somebody. Yesterday, I could not sleep. You could not sleep. Don't bother. 
is over. But how will it start when you are old? Father, I lift up this oil water before you and I declare it blessed. It shall now become the blood of Jesus Christ. An instrument of healing. Signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus. As she take it, Lord, and continue taking it, let that power called asthma be broken. I say to her in the name of Jesus. She's free forever. In Jesus' name. Now leave her. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. No, you give it to her. I declare you free. How are you feeling now? You're breathing well. Are you sure? Okay. Remove your hand from your ear now. Why are you blocking your ear? Are you sure you're breathing well? You're breathing well now. Okay. That asthma shall not be there anymore. Huh? Your hip. What happened? Okay, okay, okay. Just look at me. There's no need. I'll pray for that. Others will be in the even because of time. Lift your hand. At their back, eh? Your hip. Don't bother. Don't bother. Don't bother. I hope you, where you sit. Put her on the floor now. Why are you struggling with her? Huh? No, no, no. Leave her, leave her, leave her. It should be, it should be training your, work, your workers. It's not making it difficult for somebody who is even getting the healing. Leave her, leave her. Okay, we're going to meet all of you. Have you given your offering? I mean, spirit. It was in the sound room. Look at me, ma. Leave her. Look at me. Can you see me? Look at me. Look at me. Pen go in the name of Jesus. Declare you free. Bring your hand. In the name of Jesus. Were you the one? Zolebos kahala. Kurima indos kabaros kibe. Seprekas katayaba. Liskorobos kata. Father, let the help. From above, yeah. be his portion. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Go take your offering. driving your vision is not just only planning the greatest key in achieving your purpose in life is not just only studying but whether you plan you pray you study I've realized that everything lies on how persistent you are 
how willing you are to persist in the face of oppositions because whether your dream is of God or not whether you are pursued is born out of vision or ambition it is obvious that if that will glorify God the greatest key in driving your vision is not just only planning the greatest key in achieving your purpose in life is not just only studying but whether you plan you pray you study i've realized that everything lies on how persistent you are how willing you are to persist in the face of oppositions because whether your dream is of god or not whether you are pursued is born out of vision or ambition it is obvious that if that will glorify god if that will be a blessing to humanity devil will attack it did you hear me whatever good you are said to do will face natural and spiritual oppositions therefore in a journey to greatness resistance is inevitable you can't achieve greatness in life without persistence you cannot achieve anything great in life without persistence so make up your mind this year hearing me this night that i want to what be persistent in everything good i'm doing in my prayer life i must be persistent i'm not gonna fast one day and stop fasting whatever i'm pursuing in all my pursuit i must be what persistent despite the oppositions the challenges the trial if you can't develop that spirit you won't go far in life great plans is not a problem great plans can deliver itself we need men of great tenacity men of what if i perish i perish spirit men who are saying backward never for whatever that's the voice of persistence many of us anytime we're resisted in anything we're doing we give up that's why we can never go up those who give up easily we never go up in life i don't even make any sense here so those negative tendencies those bad habits those patterns in your life you must wake up after the service and persist in making sure you are out of them persist in making sure that that bad habit is broken even when you are praying you are fasting and you find yourself falling back to it can you hear me here i've told you something before that when you fall back when you fall down when you are fighting battle of freedom don't put your face down don't make it the end of life rise up again look up to god and continue the battle until you win the battle is anybody in the house here so you must that pattern that habit whatever it is you must be persistent in your battle until you are sure the victory is in your hand dreaming is not enough planning is not enough vision is not enough goal setting is not enough sir it cannot be enough until a man becomes what somebody who will tell you i will never let you go except you bless me My name is Pastor Bodu Machuku, the Senior Pastor of Glory Restoration Assembly. I trust that this message has been a blessing to you. 
If you're not giving your life to Christ, just repeat this simple prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner, but today I confess you as my Lord and my Savior, and I believe in my heart that you died and rose again for my salvation. By my confession, I give my life to you. Thank you, Jesus, for serving me. If you have said this simple prayer, I assure you, you've been saved. Please look for any Bible-believing church and worship or any of our branches around you. As you do that, God will bless you. Please keep watching us on this channel and God will surely bless you. We want to tell you, we love you. Thank you so much.